Hey guys, this is Jackie, our Nerdy Crafter. For the past couple of months, I've been doing a lot of research because I've been really getting obsessed over making my own cabochons. And I really wanted to make copies of those cabochons. And so with a lot of research, I was able to learn how to make my own plastic molds. And I really wanted to share this with you guys. And so for this week's tutorial, you guys learn how to make your very own plastic molds that you can either keep in a really big sheet or cut them up individually. In order to make these plastic sheets, you guys will have to learn how to make something called a vacuum former. The good news is most of the materials used in here are from the dollar store. The bad news is you might need help with some power tools. If you have any questions, check the description box. I'm going to list a bunch of questions that you guys might have with the answers. Also, the list of materials will be down there. Some of you might ask about the dimensions, but that depends how big you want to make your vacuum former. For those of you new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. There are plenty of geeky tutorials to keep you entertained. So don't forget to click that button. Got it? Here's what you'll need for this project. An already made wooden jewelry box. I got this one at the dollar store. Two pieces of wood that fit the inside length of your box. You'll have to make these. A pegboard or any other piece of wood that you can use to make holes in. The important thing about this piece of wood is that it fits exactly in your box. A drill hole attachment. This size will depend on the vacuum you're using. A good drill. A drill bit if you don't have a pegboard. Four screws. Two wooden picture frames. Or you can make your own. And they have to be bigger than your box. These pieces are important because they will sandwich your plastic sheet. And two C-clamps. If you don't have a pegboard, just take any piece of wood and drill holes into it. Feel free to put two boards underneath so that you don't make holes on your table. You need lots of holes to create a good suction. You'll keep drilling until your piece looks like the one I showed at the beginning of this video. Now take your box and you're going to make a hole for your vacuum's rod. Don't center it. That was a mistake. Just put it as low as you can. That's really important. So just put it as low as low as you can. Don't forget to remove whatever metallic pieces were on your jewelry box. We don't need them. Now what we want is for our hold board to fit exactly evenly on the top part of the box. So what you're going to do is measure the thickness of that piece of wood and then trace it on the inside of the box. Once you have that, you're going to screw the two pieces of long wood on each length of the inside of the box. That way your board is resting on them. That's all for the vacuum former. It was quite easy, wasn't it? Now this is how your vacuum former should be set up. Cabochons on top, vacuum rod in the hole, and it's really important to have your vacuum already turned on when the plastic is melted. I highly suggest that you use a shop vac, unless your normal vacuum is strong. Then it should work as well. So these are the cabochons I want to demonstrate with. The plastic I'm using is called LDPE, or Low Density Polyethylene. It's about 3 millimeters thick. It cost me about $37 Canadian for a sheet this size from a plastic distributing store. Remember to check the description box for FAQs. Now cut a piece of plastic that is the size of your frame. Sandwich it between both frames and seal it up with your C-clamps. Preheat your oven to bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll take about 5 minutes to melt this type of plastic. Feel free to use wooden boards to lift your frame. We want the plastic to melt and sag at the bottom, so you need to give it space to do that. As the plastic gets hotter, it'll start becoming transparent and the bottom will look droopy. Here's what it looks like as it's sagging. You want it to sag about 2 inches down. That's when you know it's ready. Make sure you turn on your vacuum before placing it. I can't stress it enough, otherwise this won't work. Place your frame on top and watch the magic happen. Push down quickly so that it captures as much detail as possible. Stay there for about 30 seconds with the vacuum still on. This will help it cool down quickly while still maintaining the shape. Once it starts regaining its milky white color, 
then you can unmold your pieces safely. Voila! Here's your awesome mold that you can use for clay, resin, soap, or anything else crafty. Here's a trial I made with some quick curing resin, and I'm really happy with Kirby's details. And because the mold is plastic, your resin pieces will be shiny. The candy piece did not fully capture the detail, but that's most likely due to the type of plastic I used as well as the thickness. Experiment and have fun with your new toy. I love this method so much, not only is it economical, but it opens up a lot of possibility for my own mold making projects. All done! Now depending on the detail required on your cabochons, you might need thinner plastic. So you'll just have to experiment and see if you need to melt it more or if you just need a thinner piece. Personally, I didn't mind that the part that says sweet was not properly captured because it let me customize it the way I want it. So I just took out my acrylic paint and designed it the way I want it. Don't tell me it's not cute, because it is. And if you don't think it's cute, then we can't be friends. Don't forget to subscribe. Equally add me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Until then, I will see you guys next week.